Welcome back, gearheads. This week, I'd like to introduce you to the Vandal Project. It's a 2001 Chevy truck 1500 that I brought back from a near-death experience. I'm going to start this video out with photos. I'm going to narrate tell what's going on because I didn't catch video as I got this vehicle and started working on it. Started out, I found it on OfferUp, which is an app like Craigslist. Uh, he was asking $16.50 at the time. And as I went to look at it and saw the condition it was in, all the windows were busted out and the taillights, headlights, mirrors, in a pretty rough shape. He had made someone mad and they busted them all out and wound up getting it for $1,300. The battery was dead because I was going to attempt to drive it like that with my head out the window like Ace Ventura, but I uh, decided to go ahead and call a tow truck, flatbed. He pulled it up there on the back of the truck and took it home for me. These are photos as it got to the house. You can see the windows smashed, the windshield smashed, the headlights smashed, bumpers are rough, yeah, back windows gone, taillights gone. It's in rough shape. It's been sitting like this for about six months. A good thing about it, not only because it has an LS, but it only had 129,000 miles on it. Just needed some love. Shortly after, my father-in-law and I made a trip to the salvage yard to get some parts for it. We got the door windows, the back window, uh, tried to get a three-quarter ton sway bar. We got the 05 plus brake calipers for the front and the brackets to mount them. The rear window we picked up at the salvage yard, my father-in-law Billy found while we were there. It was factory tinted, and he was actually able to extract that thing with his pocket knife. Now I did snag a three-quarter ton sway bar, and this is where I learned my lesson. A uh, three-quarter ton sway bar is thicker, so usually on most vehicles you would swap to a three-quarter ton to have more stability or for corners, less roll. But what I learned is that the sway bars are different. I thought they were different because of their newer model. But what you see here is they're it appears that they're different because of the suspension setup. The difference between coil spring setup and a torsion bar setup. I was able to get the door glass in pretty quickly. Uh, while we're waiting to get the windshield and the rear glass put in, I covered the vehicle with the tarp, or at least the broken windows with the tarp, so we wouldn't get any water in there. The next day, our buddy Pete and David came over, installed a new windshield and that back glass for us. Here it is with all the glass put in it, and also tent. We got pre-cut window tent from eBay. It's not the best quality. It's not 3M, but it did the job. 13 bucks, you can't beat it. The back glass was already tinted with the factory tent and it all matches, looks good together. I gave it a bath and threw a $50 toolbox in the bed and she's starting to look better. This is a smog air pump. I've never seen one on an LS vehicle before. Must be some California stuff, but it had a pipe going from the pump to the exhaust manifold and into the other exhaust manifold. That was quickly removed. At the same time I removed that, I removed the EGR valve. This hole you see here is the port for the EGR valve coming off the exhaust manifold. I filled it with the freeze plug. Now this has been my opportunity to start learning HP tuners. So I busted it out and started playing as soon as I could. I'm barely scratching the surface, but it's been fun so far. The truck was throwing a code for a knock sensor. A knock sensor, if you don't know, will pull timing. It's actually a false knock though that it was receiving. Uh, this is common with these vehicles. They get water around the knock sensors, they start corroding and send in a false signal. We know we can't have the lost power from the timing being pulled from this code. So I got in there and put new knock sensors, knock sensor harness, and cleaned out the throttle body. These are two inch drop shackles that I came across at a flea market, picked them up for 20 bucks. Usually when you put two inch drop shackles on the back of a truck, it levels it out, brings it back in down and levels the vehicle out. Uh, in this case, it did bring it down two inches, but it appears that this model sits a little bit higher in the rear. It's got some rake to it, but a lot less rake than it did have. Most people don't know that these trucks come with cabin air filters, filters for the AC system, to catch the crap in the vents so it doesn't get clogged up in the evaporator. And you can tell these are probably the original filters, as nasty they are, we got new ones slipped in there. When we walk out to the truck here in a minute, I'll show you where they're located at. Now, transmission temperature is important, especially when you play with the truck like I do, and especially when you're running a 4L60E like in this truck. So I swapped the gauge cluster out for a HD 2500 three-quarter ton cluster that has a transmission gauge in the bottom left corner. 
Now it's important to know that they make different clusters. The newer truck clusters, I think around 03 they started, don't work in the previous before 03 like this 2001. So make sure you match the right cluster if you're getting one. This is the cluster in the truck. Now the downside to doing this swap is you don't, whatever miles were on that cluster are still going to show because those miles are stored in the cluster. So I went to these guys here in San Antonio called Automotive Electronics and they were able to take care of me. They were able to fix the cluster to the original mileage that was on the old cluster and while they were there they also added blue LEDs for me. This truck had something that didn't look right with the belt. The belt had a rib ripped off of it and it had a squeaking noise. And that's a common issue on these trucks. If someone takes a power steering pulley off, they don't put it all the way back on. It should sit flush with it, pretty much flush with the uh, edge of the shaft. And if you don't get it right, it can just be a couple millimeters. If you don't get it right, you're going to have belt squeak. Well, this was more than a couple mi millimeters and it was actually able to rip a rib off the belt. Now to fit those 2005 13 inch front brakes, I'm going to need bigger wheels. The wheels that were on there were 16 inch. You got to have at least a 17 inch. These were the wheels that I was considering at first. I picked them up for 50 bucks. It would have been an easy upgrade. But I've got this thing for the Texas Edition 20s. I just didn't want to spend the money on them. Until I came across this post on OfferUp. I snagged a set of four Texas Edition wheels with tires. 600 bucks. It would have cost me more than that to buy tires. I didn't like the black on the wheels. So I tried out this paint stripper to remove the black and see how they look. That wasn't a very fun project right there. I had to go over them about four times, given the, the stripper wasn't a very aggressive stripper. It didn't have any smell to it, but a, a different method would probably be preferred, some type of a more aggressive stripper or maybe even media blasting them. I didn't jump to media blast though because I wanted to try to save the finish that was on the wheels. And here they are on the truck. They came out decent. They came out acceptable. You stay far enough away from them, they look good. And the black accent on there, I kind of skipped it at first because it was so difficult to get off. I figured I would just do the surface and see how it looks. The black would match the truck anyways, but it looks good. It works way better than what was on there. Next was exhaust. I had to do something about the exhaust. My father-in-law was annoyed because it was too quiet and didn't sound like a truck, he says. So I had to, when got the cats removed and put a 40 series Flowmaster on it to help it sound like a truck. Then, to help spread the word about a geared for life, I had a large perforated decal made to cover the back window. But it's perforated, it has holes in it, so you're still able to see out the back window easily. Alright, enough of the pictures. Let's go head outside and do a walk around the truck. Here it is, the Vandal Project. All the windows back in it, headlights, turn signals, tail lights. Enough to be street legal and driven now. I've been daily driving it for a month now. We're on a little bit of a decline here, but you can still see the stance. The decline is not affecting it much. The two inch drop shackles did lower the back two inches, which usually levels it out. But in this case, for some reason, it's still about two inches higher in the back. This rake is fine. Imagine how high it was before I put the two inch drop shackles on the back. Back end was sticking way too high in the air. These are the wheels that I removed all the black paint off of. They look fine from 20 feet. You get close enough, you can see they're not as nice as a new wheel but it still looks better than the wheels that were on there and they'll do for the job for this vehicle i still need to replace the front and rear bumpers or i gotta find them first uh, not only are they bent up but uh, they're missing the plastic that goes on them that's why the front one looks so rough look buck tooth without the plastic that goes on the bottom there those uh tow hooks you see in the front i snagged those out of the junkyard added them to it 
here you can see the rear bumpers twisted dented bent plastics coming off and pushed into the bedside there it's definitely got to go eventually i'd like to get the hd hood on the front i'm considering the grill and bumper too but mainly the hood makes the biggest difference now this is the first ls vehicle that i've come across with the smog pump and it was located right over here in the left which is actually funny because i've seen these plates in the past and wondered what they were for now i know that's where the smog pump was mounted it was held down with something that looked like a battery clamp right there and then it had hoses that went into each exhaust manifold actually the passenger exhaust manifold you can see i've just pinched it off for now i have to find a manifold that doesn't have the fitting for the air pump smog air pump but on the i say passenger driver side but on the passenger side i've already put a different manifold on that didn't have egr or the fitting was here for the air hose and EGR is deleted you can see under there stuck a freeze plug in where the EGR port is in the intake and that was done for those of you that were wondering where the cabin air filter is on these vehicles the newer ones I don't know exactly what year they quit around 2003 or so but it's right here AC box usually you may probably have a plastic cover covering them up this truck doesn't have one but this panel right here it hooks in the top and then in the back there's a screw right back here take the screw out and pull it down and you'll find two separate filters in there well the first one comes straight down this one in the back you have to slide forward and then pull it down right now it's got rubber mats for flooring uh, i want to swap that out for some carpet same with the doors the doors are manual i'm going to swap them out for the power doors down the road my buddy James hooked me up with this center console. I think he said it was a 2015 Tahoe, but it's a nice console. It's got a compartment in here and a compartment under here, and someone can still sit there. But I just pulled out the middle middle piece that was in here before because it doesn't fold down and nobody can. Uh, you don't have an armrest. Someone can sit there, but you don't have an armrest. So we put this in for now until we get other seats to go next to it. There's not much else really going on on the inside here. The headliner is rough. I'm working on uh, making a new headliner for it, just like the C10. Got a couple more parts I need to get. Back window's dirty, but you can see out of it. Driver's seat is very rough, but it'll be replaced. Dash needs to be replaced. It wound up, it started cracking as I worked on the truck for moving it. It's a little too bright out here to see right now, but the uh, got the blue LEDs in the dash. You can see a little bit there. And we also put them in the headlight switch and also in the AC controls. I plan on putting LEDs in my wife's Tahoe also, which is the same setup as this. So hopefully when I do that, I'll snag a video, put them in. I've showed these phone mounts in previous videos, but I'm going to show it again. I love these phone mounts. Skosh phone mount. I'll put a link in the video description, but I love them. I'm going to tighten it up here. This one, I... I use hot glue gun to put it on because I'm going to replace this bezel anyways. And this was reused off of another vehicle. So it didn't have any sticky on it. I just hot glued it. Work truck, right? But you just slap your phone on it when you get in. Plug it in, charge it. And you need to go take it out. Little metal plate here. I'm not a fan of sticking things to my dash. But this is well worth it. Very convenient. When you see your GPS while you're driving down the road. I love it, man. For a while now, I've been itching, itching to cut a frame, cut a long bed frame, cut it down to be a short bed, put a short bed on it, drive shaft, everything else needed. So this is probably my opportunity to do that. It'll just be a little while before I do. I got some other projects to finish before I start taking apart this one, especially since it's now my daily driver. Now the main reason I'm getting this truck, not only because it was cheaper than most and it looked like a fun project to build, but it was to quit driving my daily driving, excuse me, my blue C10. It was fine in Alabama. Traffic wasn't that bad. But now that I'm back in San Antonio, traffic is more, much more. And uh, theft is more. So to keep from raising the uh, potential of wrecking it or getting it stolen, I wanted to find something else to daily drive and retire the C10 to a weekend toy. Things to come in the near future for the Vandal. I'm doing LED headlights, actually LED all the lights. I'll be installing a large transmission cooler, uh, upgraded power steering pulley, 
E fans, electric fans, get rid of the clutch fan. Uh, 2005 and up front brakes, they're larger. And possibly Hydro Boost. And I also have a factory limited slip unit to put in the rear end. Not too much longer, I'll be getting a video up of the family wagon, which is a 2001 Chevy Tahoe. A lot of similarities between this truck, but it's in much better shape. I recently got the chance to install an alarm on the Vandal, help keep it secure, and then remote start, get the AC nice and cold. As I picked up this project, I was posting what was going on on Facebook and Instagram and the parts that I needed to be able to drive it, like headlights, taillights, and mirrors. And my fellow gearheads stepped up to help me out, and I appreciate it. I want to say thank you to Javier Rodriguez, Chase Thomas, Ryan Patterson, Ronnie Holt, Ben Burns, Andre Dugas, and Redneck0125 on Instagram. Thank you very much for looking out for me and trying to help me out. I know there's someone that I forgot. There's probably a few that I forgot. Thank you all for your help in helping me make this project driving. Like always, y'all have a great weekend, be productive, and keep on wrenching.